a wolf. Um, and the, the line between wolf and what's considered a bear cub, which is someone who's a bear but not old enough to be a bear, is kind of depending on how nice your body is and how aggressive you are. Like if you don't have a very nice body, you're probably a bear cub. But if you're like jacked muscularly, you're considered a wolf. Okay, so um, then there's a gym bunny. Gym bunnies are also called hunks, and they are men in their mid to late 20s, sometimes early 30s, sometimes younger, but if you go younger, you're usually still a twink even if you're cut, um, that are, they live at the gym. Like, they have those perfect Adonis <laughs> male forms, um, usually almost always clean-shaven, all over, you know. Um, statues. Think Greek statues. They spend all the time at the gym. This is the type of man you will see in most gay people. Um, gym bunnies. They're also called punks. Um, and they're usually associated with being brainless. However, that is not always the case. Um, twinks are also associated with being brainless, but that is also not the case. Um, then there's, oh my, oh, otters. Nick is an otter. An otter? No, but, but, if you, but, no, but if you were, I'm just saying that you, physically, Nick is an otter. An otter, an otter is a young male, usually under the age of 25, who is like a twink in the sense that they look very young, but they usually rock some form of beard or body hair. <laughs> so they're not a bear because they're A, way too young, and B, you very thin usually, but they're not anything else because they're not muscular, the but they're not wolves either. You so know, they're not everyone in my neighborhood is one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, most hipster boys are otters. Yeah. Um, but yes, they're called <laughs> otters because they're, they're, they're like small and petite, but, and they're cute, but they've just got a lot of body hair, so that makes them otters. Um, <laughs> Otter, Wait, otter what's is the usually difference with that in a twink. Twinks are hairless, oh, no. and Jeez. usually, yeah. and also otters are not necessarily feminine. Mm. Twinks are usually associated with being very feminine acting. If you meet a really butch twink, he's probably not a twink. You would call him something else, like uh, a, a boy hairless next door. Otter. <laughs> what? A hairless. Otter? No, you can't be hairless and be an otter. It's a rule. <laughs> you have to have body, and, and and to be an otter, it's not even have to have body hair. You have to have facial hair to be an otter. If you don't have facial hair, you're not an otter. It's just like the rules. Okay, it's so like beer seven mustache. minutes. Do you want more? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Does it feel like um, more than five to you? Uh, I was thinking. I was like, it's either about five or over. I was okay, feeling. Keep going. Okay. So we gauge the mood. Okay. So, You're also keeping it very PG. I am keeping it very PG. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many more. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay, let's move into age brackets now. So now we've covered physical types. Okay. Well, I'll do some lesbians really quick because you know they deserve some credits too. Um, a feminine lesbian is called usually a lipstick lesbian, and a very feminine lesbian to the point where their you know very stereotypical straight woman is called Maybelline lesbian. <laughs> now on the other end of that is the famous. You know, crew cut, flannel shirt, large. Hello, my name is Shirley. That is referred to as. Did this have voice for the rest of it? Sure, why not? Um, no, that is referred to as a bull dyke. That's a very offensive term, though. Do not say that to a lesbian. That is what gay boys say about lesbians. You do not say that to a. Like, you can call a lipstick lesbian a lipstick lesbian, they won't get offended. But if you walk up to a bull dyke and you're like, you're a bull dyke, they'll be like, I was, a, I was a lesbian and a woman I'm offended. You know, they really. Um, and then there's what's called a baby dyke. A baby dyke is another term called a Bieberite. And what? they're a Bieberite. And oh, um, yeah. they're usually young lesbians. <laughs> yeah. They're usually young lesbians under the age of about twenty-five with short hair that look like a feminine a feminine gay boy, usually. It's from a distance. You know you're in the presence of a true Bieberite when from like a distance at a gay bar, if you're a gay man, you're like, man, that guy's really hot. Oh, that's not a that's not a guy. That is a woman. That is that's when you know you're in the presence of a true baby dyke. So what? Oh, so they were called baby dykes before Justin Bieber hit. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, baby dykes. So the older term is baby dyke, but now they've been replaced with Bieberites. I like that one better. Bieberites or baby dykes? Bieberites. Bieberites. Because like they look like Justin Bieber. That's the joke. There's a website. Yeah. It's called yeah. Lesbians Who Look Like Justin Bieber. And there's all these pictures <laughs> of these girls it's who really look like great. Justin, and they look just like him. If you take away the boobs, they are him. That's the sad. Most of them don't have. Yeah, they, um, don't, yeah, they, they usually spec some tape from now. So those are the three main types of lesbians. There's there's more, but those are the three that everybody should know. Um, okay, moving back into gay age, because a, uh, a date wants us to get a little bit more X-rated. Um, there's what's called a daddy. 
and there's what's called a boy. A daddy boy sounds exactly what it sounds like. It is a daddy is an older man, sometimes a bear, sometimes a wolf, you know, who adopts culturally like a younger male, like an otter or a twink. And the relationship is, it's a, it, they're dating, but it's a very like parental child relationship, like the, dynam the dynamic of it. So like the dad tells the boy what to do. And it's, it, and it's yes, it's sexual. It goes into S and M with dominant submissive. It goes right into that. It's out, but it's also, it's it actually like people shouldn't hate on it because it makes a lot of people very happy. Because for a lot of younger gay boys, they don't have very good family lives and they have daddy issues. So by dating an older, more aggressive man who is there for them, who holds, it helps them resolve a lot of that issue. And for the older man, it allows them to, you know, date someone young and hot who thinks that they're young and hot. So it helps reaffirm that the fact that they may be getting older, but there's still something that's very sexually desirable. A daddy and a boy is not the same situation as a sugar daddy. A sugar daddy is for money. And a sugar daddy is a term that's not a gay term. Everybody knows what a sugar daddy is. But a daddy in the gay world is a, is a positive term. It means that, yes, I date older men because I like security, safety, a man to hold and cuddle me, and again, what the daddy gets out of it is the sense that I'm getting older, but I'm still hot. Like, st people still desire me. These boys want me. So it's a good thing. It reaffirms their sexual identity. Um, Can you use the same term in the straight world or no? Um, yes, but that is, it's more common in the straight world because women usually, you, women generally date older and men usually daddy. date younger. Ooh, girl. You have what? Um, I have a daddy. That's why I was asking. Oh, well, no, that, it crosses over, but it doesn't, it doesn't really cross over to lesbians, though. There's not really a mother-daughter thing. It's not, or it's not culturally significant. Um, a date, help me on here. Give me a, give me a topic to go off of. Trannies. Oh, trans. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, tranny is a term that means a lot of things, and there is way more than one way to be really a tranny. Fast. There is a drag queen. Drag queens are men who identify sexually as men, who put on the persona of a woman, invent a character to go along with it, and usually do it for an entertainment purpose. Not always, though. Sometimes they just do it to an, to feel a different part of themselves but they are not transsexual. And that's a big thing that people mess up. They think if a man dresses up like a woman, he wants to be a woman. That's not the case. Drag queens like being men. And by the way, not all drag queens are gay. There's a lot of straight drag queens out there. Um, then there's what is called a transvestite. A transvestite is different than a transsexual. Again, a transvestite is like a drag queen in the sense that it puts on the persona of a woman, becomes a woman, but still feels like a man. The main difference between a transvestite and a drag queen is a drag queen may put on her drag, you know, once a week for a show or to go out to the bar. A transvestite is usually a drag almost every day for some purpose, for some part of the day. And it's a lifestyle. And they invent a, a female personality to go with it. So they have two personalities, their male personality and their female personality. Some people would say that those are transsexual individuals who haven't come to terms with their gender identity disorder, but don't try telling them that. And then there is a transsexual. Transsexual is somebody who is born in the wrong body. So it would be a woman trapped inside the body of a man who <coughs> has male genitalia but rejects the male genitalia and wants to be a woman. So they will dress up like a woman and present themselves as a woman and speak as a woman and be addressed as a woman. They're not a man. And so most, some of them go through the procedure to become women, others do not for financial reasons or because they don't want to part with that part of themselves. But it's one of the, and this is just something you should know in, the, in terms of the business, never call a transsexual woman a man. It's really offensive. It will fight you. Oh, she will fight you. And she will get in your face and it will be ugly. Wait, wait. <laughs> never, never, male never say, are you a boy? Sexual. Like, never say, oh, um, sir, what do you think? Like, even if it's so obvious that it's not a, like a biological woman, you have to address them the way that they want to be addressed, because otherwise, it's incredibly offensive. Um, that's something all of you should know. Um, and then there's what's called a trans man, which is exactly what it sounds like. There's a woman who, uh, it's a man, actually, I should say it's a man born in the body of a woman. So it's this exact same opposite thing. So a trans man, usually trans men are harder to tell. 
Because, you know, with Justin Bieber, I mean, you know, men can look incredibly feminine and still be men. So if you see a, a somewhat feminine looking guy, you might not know you're talking to a trans man until someone tells you or they tell you. But still, the same terminology applies. If you see a trans man with boobs, you do not go, hey, are you a woman? That's just really offensive. And trans men will fight you. Because they've got something to prove. Because they have that whole masculine, like, I'm a man thing going on. So they will definitely fight you. Um, okay, that's 15 minutes. Did it go fast? <laughs> yes. Jesus. What? How did that go?